and have it out behind the back about half the hook shank length. So I figured this would be probably right. Okay. Try to oops pin it down without having it flare too much. And the idea here is to build a little bit of an underbody of deer hair without going too far to the front. Okay, this is an extra wrapping step, but I'm not tying here competitively or speed tying, so I can afford to do things like that. Okay, so trim this of deer hair. And from here on, we start adding successive bits of wing to this. Okay, the other magic ingredient here is dubbing. And the recipe calls for seal fur, as in something like this. Okay, and so the next thing is again to take another clump of, of deer hair. First extra one that goes is supposed to go and line up with your your previous uh, with your previous clump here. Okay, so maybe this is a bit more visible like this. So that's one thing. And the second thing is you don't want to overbuild this body. So you want to measure this up and pre-trim it to about where you want to tie it in so that you don't just bulk up that body so you can, you can actually go and, and put more on top of it. So I'm just going to take my chances here. I'm going to trim this, stack it on top, and hope for the best. Too far. Okay. I want to keep this down. I don't want to go too far and pull down because then the whole thing flares up. Okay. Then I'll just continue adding on dubbing, covering the covering the body as you go. You put three or four clumps in. Depending on the size of the hook. So something this huge is going to take, sorry, something this size <laughs> is going to take about four, right? So the tail and three wing sections, as the hook gets smaller, you start dropping. But I think even on a, on a smaller hook, you still end up with it at the minimum two, two segments. And there's the difference between your elk hair caddis and the, and the Mikulak, because in the elk hair caddis, I don't, I don't tie in a, a tail. I just do straight body and then boom the wing so to me that would be the the main difference so it just kind of fills things in in a, a little bit different way and what's nice about it is that you don't get that that gap which is so pronounced on a poorly tight fly like that one and this works for all sorts of things one day I was uh, out at East Pit Lake and it was windy, it was September and there were grasshoppers blowing onto the water. I had no grasshoppers with me, but I had one of these. I had a fun afternoon. Yeah. Are you using the ice dubbing or just the regular dubbing? Right now I'm just, I'm just going with the, with the seal fur. 
So I just left a little bit of the, the, the sparkly at the, back. Uh, at the back and then I'm, I'm continuing on with the, with the regular stuff. Okay. So I think it's time for another piece of a little bit of deer. Took me a long time to to figure out. Now the next one, you don't want to go all the way to the tail end again because you want to start building up that nice shape. So you kind of go to about halfway of where the previous clump goes. So this, you want this to kind of sit on top and start to build up a nice caddis shape for you. Okay. So again, I'm going to try to pre-trim this thing and tie it in on top. Hopefully I didn't cut it too much. I guess I did. Well, a little bit of cheating going on here, but you don't see it. Okay. it goes on top of the rest. Now this one again about as I'm you know putting them on top of each other again I go to about half of where the previous clump was and I tie it down. Here I have to be careful I don't want to create a big big mess. And the other thing is I need to make sure that I obtain a level tying area where I can put the hackle on. Okay, so at this point there's no no trimming of the of the deer hair. I just go here a little bit more. I need to leave a little bit of room there at the eye. Now the idea here is, okay, we're going to put a hackle but in a sort of a funny way, it's a hackle that's going to be trimmed top and bottom. Okay, and then just pluck the offending fibers at the end, I'm not going to worry about that. Now you can go crazy with this and um, Put extra dubbing here or not, depending on your on your tastes. On that, I guess the orthodox thing to do here is to put a little bit of dubbing. Okay. Normally, I wouldn't do this because it just slows me down too much. I don't think it matters, but maybe it does because my flies usually, when they come apart, this is where they where they suffer. They they lose the they, they lose the hackle. I mean, the, the trout just chew this, okay? See, I shouldn't have done this. Got carried away talking nonsense, and I should have taken a piece of hackle first. Now, I've used grizzly. The fish don't seem to come up to it and say, grizzly, you're supposed to put brown. Um, so it works, okay? Recipe calls for brown. So I'm just gonna use brown. It doesn't have to be high-grade hackle. This is, I guess, a bit more of what's called a badger. Whatever. Just a piece of hackle. All it does is it basically puts two outriggers on the fly to keep it level. Because as you see, there's absolutely nothing else other than this hair holding this up. So it's a fairly low, low floating affair. I guess that's why it works well as a grasshopper too, because 
I remember us being told not that long ago that to do a grasshopper properly, you have to have it. Was it Dave Whitlock last year? Who was lecturing us on grasshopper and uh, the importance of having grasshoppers um, sort of riding low in the uh, in the water. I guess this fly does that. Okay, so I got a hackle on here. Now I got my dubbing going. Okay. Then I wrap the hackle on top of that dubbing. Really, what strength thread were you using? Uh, this is a six odd unit thread, but I'm sure you can use. I I don't think you need stronger than this. I mean, it's. I guess the only reason you may want to use thicker is if you worry about flaring the hair too much with thinner thread on the one side. On the other, on the one hand, on the other hand, the issue is also one of bulk. So if you use, I find that using the finer, you know, the finest thread that I can get away with usually makes the flies a little less bulky for me. So I'm, I just like to go with that. Okay, so I have a nice fine mess right now. The head of the hook, the eye of the hook is somewhere in here. I'm gonna try to find that where it is. And I probably didn't leave too much room, but this being here, I can always push back a little bit. And to, to achieve that kind of nice head, it's always a good idea to do the wraps right under the hair. I'm just gonna trim this away. It's always fun to play this dangerous game, right? You can always cut your thread. Right? But see, that's why I cut the thread at the beginning. Get it over with. Yeah. Get it out of the get it out of the system. Okay. So now my head is nice and crowded. And I go for the magic finishing tool and whip finish ahead in there. Okay. Keeping you up here? No. Sleep once every two days and all right. Now comes the trimming, so haircuts. Shape the head, you know, the usual caddis fashion. That's one thing. And the next thing to do here is to trim the hackle, both top and bottom. Hopefully there will be something left at the end. So like I said, all you want is just a, something to create a disturbance on the surface of the water because these, uh, these flies when they hatch actually, not only that they're this huge, but they run on the water, all over the place. I 